now. We do have Prophet just darting in and out, but TZ with the Primal Rage, he's gonna go for the back cap. Someone needs to get out the point now, and it will be the Primal Rage Winston, but still, he's running out of HP. Prophet still in this as John who falls once again. Prophet sitting alive with 40 HP, so can he be healed back up and still be a presence, still be a nuisance, and he's killed Cox. He's looking for a bumper, he gets the kill to him too. Hox was finally able to respond, but another Pokemon ready for Prophet. He can easily throw this one back in. The Palin is on the cusp of finishing this map, and run away or losing men. Run away or losing men as another Graviton Surge comes out from Uyal here, as they are cleaning up the members of Run Away. One minute and four seconds. It's safe to say that in Overwatch, few roles are able to create memorable plays like the DPS role. With the Overwatch League, where the best of the best play, we get to see these types of plays week after week. Throughout most of its first inaugural season, Tracer and Genji have been the dominant hero choice amongst DPS players, and among the best of them is London Spitfire's Prophet. Pull off a pick. Prophet's going to make the first attempt though with the rip tire. Yep. Whoa, this tire's going way up there. And down from above, oh, three! He came from behind and nobody saw that one coming. That was crazy. The 18-year-old all-star player, Jun Young Park, was born on November 19, 1999 from Jinju, South Korea. Under his handle Prophet, he would make his debut on GC Busan as a DPS player in April 2017. Both the team's and Prophet's journey throughout the 2017 Apex series would go down as one of the strongest debuts of an esports team in competitive Overwatch history. In an era before the Overwatch League, GC Busan began as an amateur team backed by the government of the South Korean city, Busan, and the airline company, Air Busan. The team formed in early 2017, having the strong potential to build a hometown fan base with the support of its host city. The eventual assembled roster would later become some of the most prestigious and recognizable names in the game, including of course Prophet, Hureg, Gesture, Hagopun, Wuyal, Closer, and Ariel. Initially, no one among this team really stood out, and the organization itself was considered a solid team but was overshadowed by other notable teams at the time. But that impression would not last, as GC Busan earned both recognition as a powerhouse team as well as their qualification to Apex Challengers Season 4 by winning in their first major tournament, the 2017 Road to Apex. This alone would be impressive for any team just starting out, but they did so in spectacular fashion, they won without losing a single map. But that isn't to say that they would simply roll through every match during their next competitive tournament. The road ahead had its share of difficulties as they encountered their first obstacle at the second group stage of Apex Challengers. GC Busan proceeded with a 6-1 win-loss record going 19-9 in maps. But the team encountered their first roadblock, losing their match against Luxury Watch Red 0-3. This loss would upset GC Busan's position within the standings, making the difference in the top placements as they had missed the first place spot of Apex Challengers. Instead, they proceeded to Apex Season 4 with a second place finish at Challengers. Having been placed in Group C with LW Red, Africa Blue, and Rox Orcus, GC Busan once again had to face their adversaries LW Red, losing 3-1 in their first match of the Apex season. Despite suffering back-to-back -back losses to LW Red, the team overcame their group during the mid-season, earning consistent wins. But it would be in the playoffs where GC Busan truly made their existence known to the Overwatch world. Despite their strong performance in Challengers, no one would have expected what was to come during the Apex playoffs. In a major upset, GC Busan emerged with a 3-0 victory over back-to-back -back Apex champions Lunatic High. This initial momentum would take a hit when facing Runaway. In a close but decisive 3-2 loss, GC Busan would need to rally and face Lunatic High once more to decide who would advance into the semifinals. Despite their previous victory over the returning Apex champions, many favored Lunatic High to be the victors of this matchup, but GC Busan immediately turned things around with their own offensive strategy. With incredible alt coordination and target selection, Lunatic High are humbled again by GC Busan, who completely rolled through the best team in the world 3-0. 
Then in the semifinals, GC Busan achieved an unlikely upset against another powerhouse team, Cloud9 Kongdu, sweeping them 4-0. Now approaching the grand finals of Apex Season 4, GC Busan had already made it further than any other Apex Challenger Series team, but to win Apex, it would need to outplay Runaway. In what can only be described as an intense, heart-racing best-of-seven series, GC Busan shocked the Overwatch world, edging out Runaway with incredible teamwork and through great use of their original dive strategy. GC Busan played a control-style dive with Hureg playing Soldier or Farah, bringing long-range DPS with Prophet playing Tracer. The flexibility of the DPS duo allows GC Busan to have the ability to suddenly swap into full dive mid-game, unleashing Prophet's Genji. They're still losing out on members, our runaway, as Bumper goes down. Tizzy also cut down by Profit here with that Dragon Blade. He'll finish off Jano, and that will be the completion on the point A. So 3 minutes, 12 seconds on the... All of this and more resulted in GC Busan winning the title of Apex Season 4 Champions. For his outstanding play in the series, Profit in particular was praised as being statistically the best Tracer Genji player in the Korean pro scene, on top of being declared MVP of the Apex Finals. His standout DPS play managed to best all the top Korean teams who originally didn't even put GC Busan in their sights. Profit and his team had completed the Royal Road, which refers to when a rookie team wins their first major tournament. For a new team, this is incredibly difficult to accomplish, but those who travel the Royal Road are said to have long and successful careers, and Prophet's career was only just beginning. After becoming the Korean champions, GC Busan went to Shanghai to compete in the Global APAC, where they once again destroyed teams from Africa Freaks to Runaway. With this string of back-to-back -back tournament wins under their belt and the announcement of the Overwatch League, everyone knew that the members of GC Busan were destined for greater and bigger stages. These expectations were met with the formation of the London Spitfire, where the power of GC Busan is combined with the flexibility of Cloud9 Kongdu. London paired Birdring, one of the most flexible DPS players with the powerful punching power of Profit, backed up by one of the best Senyatas in the league, Bedozen. During their time in the league, the London Spitfire has run other teams ragged, and an epic 5-map slugout managed to take the title of Stage 1 Champions over NYXL. This feat could be largely credited to the DPS duo of London being able to play both Dive and Anti-Dive, crucial playstyles in the old Mercy meta. While they did not win, the Spitfire overall placed second during Stage 2. However, Stage 3, London looked shaky, ending the season with a 5-5 match record, which seemed uncharacteristic of the team. This may be partially due to Birdring's wrist injury, which put him out for a few matches, and London's excessively large roster causing chaos for the team. But even now in Stage 4, London is struggling to replicate their previous success. But due to their excellent performances across the first two stages, London has great odds of still reaching the end of season playoffs. Despite his team's performance currently being inconsistent, Profit has been anything but. Profit plays at a relatively high EDPI of 6600, yet despite the high sensitivity, Profit's aim is super even, with him able to pull off incredibly fast 180s due to the high sensitivity. While capable of playing every DPS hero at a high level, Profit's most notable heroes include both Genji and Tracer. Prophet plays Genji in a very calm and calculated manner, placing himself deliberately into favorable situations to get resets and set up chain dashes. His play is all about the calm, deliberate execution from the first contact to last. Prophet is always thinking, how can I kill the enemy efficiently or safely? Even his Dragon Blades seem as if they are planned out beforehand, every dash leaving him exactly within range to kill a target with sub-120 health. As for his other notable hero, Prophet plays Tracer with the same game plan as his Genji. Calm and methodical, he constantly waits for a chance to dive in and get a few shots in while the enemy team isn't looking. Prophet also takes his time with blinks, using some to get in of course, but always keeping some in reserve for a quick retreat when things start to look a bit dicey. The scary thing about Prophet is that he plays at a very consistent level all the time. Even though it doesn't look like he does any special tricks, he has reached such a level of consistency that his every move could win a fight. And boy, when this Spitfire has a payload ready to deliver, you can expect Prophet to come up big for his team. Prophet's Overwatch League journey hasn't been a smooth one. 
During the first stage of the Overwatch League, Prophet had been caught in the midst of a minor controversy. Prior to the Spitfire's match against the San Francisco Shock, the player camera focused on him when this happened. I read on Icon Ball, though. I mean, really sick fire play. Prophet! Whoa! Whoa! I did not see that one coming from Prophet. It didn't take long for Blizzard to condemn this act, as it happened during the live broadcast of the match and was witnessed by many. However, it should be known that this was not a malicious act. Apparently, his gesture was a response to something said to him by the audio team in the dugout area, and he had forgotten that the player cameras were live at the time. While he did issue an apology on Twitter, it was confirmed by C9 CEO Jack Etienne that Profit had received a $1,000 fine from the league, which wasn't all too surprising considering other players had been receiving fines for other infractions as well, and that in 2015, League of Legends player Hai had been fined for a similar infraction. But this minor controversy would be the least of his concerns, as the London Spitfire have been living up to their namesake, as they are currently doing loop-de-loops in the standings, constantly going from the highest to the middle of the pack. Despite where the Spitfire currently stand, Prophet's career has been a highly active one, and one that has been incredibly exciting to watch. From GC Busan's journey throughout the 2017 Apex series, to now as the London Spitfire struggling to maintain their placement for the end-of-season playoffs in the Overwatch League, Prophet has always been an enjoyable player to watch, and we're certainly hopeful that he will be capable of his previous success. Ultimately, due to their outstanding performance in the first stage, the London Spitfire have more or less guaranteed themselves a playoff spot, and hopefully when the playoffs start, we will get to see the Spitfire flying high, and Profit once again cutting his way through the competition. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share as it really helps out the channel quite a lot. Otherwise, for more content like this, be sure to check out some of our other profile videos. And of course, to stay up to date with all of our uploads, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified.